Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It's Thursday, June 21st, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. It looks like some of the tensions on the southern border of the United States are easing a little bit. President Trump yesterday signed an order that will stop family separations at the border checkpoints. Some claim that he was bowing to pressure from anxious allies. Others claim that it was just a clarification of existing policy. The end result, however, is a good one. Children will no longer be separated from their families as they present themselves at the border for asylum in the United States. Phil Davis of the Capitol broke a story last night that an employee of the sheriff's office has been arrested and charged with obstructing justice and illegally accessing a computer. Chanel Holland, a longtime employee of the sheriff's office, apparently had accessed the computer database and informed 10 people about impending charges against them that were sealed. The 10 were indicted on the charges on June 8th. Arrest warrants were issued, but they were under specific instructions not to go public and to be limited only to police and the state's attorney's office. State police indicated that she jeopardized the investigation and that those 10 individuals, which are alleged to be gang members, could have fled from justice or set up a sabotage for police officers when they came to arrest them. Thankfully, none of that came to fruition, and they were indeed arrested. In a written statement to the Capitol, Bateman said, This disappoints me greatly, but I cannot tolerate a member of the criminal element working among the great men and women that make up this agency. Coupled with Bateman's personal issues, a couple failed audits, that oddball investigation of the state's attorney's office, I think this latest debacle might have just sank Sheriff Bateman's election chances. The FBI is warning about a serious federal crime that's on the rise, even though many incidents are probably not being reported. Sexual assaults in airplanes. While sexual assaults in airline flights are still relatively rare, agents have said the number of reported cases has increased in recent years. In 2014, there were 38 cases. In 2017, there were 63 reported cases. And so far in 2018, there have been 10 reports on flights strictly that have just landed at BWI Marshall Airport. Brian Nato, the assistant special agent in charge of the FBI's Baltimore division, said the attacks usually involve inappropriate touching, ranging from grazing a body part to even more graphic acts. Maryland's Board of Public Works has approved putting $375,000 toward a marketing campaign to help the state's seafood industry, which has been hit by a labor shortage. The vote yesterday was intended to help the crab industry after a change in the federal HB2 visa program left a number of eastern shore crab houses without the seasonal foreign crab processing labor they've depended on for years. The money approved by the Board of Public Works will go to a Maryland Department of Agriculture program that markets seafood sales. Annapolis Alderman Mark Rodriguez and two local Annapolis attorneys will travel to Texas in August to assist the asylum seekers being held in an immigration detention center. Rodriguez, along with local attorney Polly Peters and Eileen Powers, will make a trip to Dilly, Texas on August 19th. The duration of their trip is unknown. And we have heard that the facility houses up to 2,400 women and children and only one full-time attorney to do all of the processing. The concept is that the three additional people will be able to process these people quicker. Rodriguez is not an attorney, but he is studying to be one at the University of Maryland. And we have learned that the Lowe's Annapolis Hotel has been sold. They were sold to a company called Adventurous Journeys Capital and will be rebranded as the Graduate Hotel. Graduate hotels target college communities, and they cater mainly to university alumni, attendees for sporting events in college towns such as Ann Arbor, Michigan, or Charlottesville, Virginia. There have been a lot of hotel sales in the last year. This is the fourth Annapolis hotel to sell in the past year. The Westin, the Annapolis Waterfront, and of course the O'Callaghan Hotel all were sold in the last year. 
That is about it for our top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net for other news that we do update throughout the day. And because it is Thursday, that means we have our Maker Minutes with Trevor. And of course, like we always do every day, we've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast coming right up. It's that time of year. Get your summer in gear at Eastport or Rockin', taking over 2nd Street in Eastport once again from 11 to 8 this Saturday with 37 bands, including Area 301, the Kelly Bell Band, Almighty Senators, the Grilled Lincolns, and more. Enjoy delicious food from local trucks and Annapolis favorites, a super fun kids area, arts and crafts, and wash it all down with a tasty beverage. For tickets and info, visit eastportorockin.com. Proceeds benefit amfm.org and the Annapolis Maritime Museum. See you there. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, June 21st. More rain yesterday for Annapolis and much of Anne Arundel County, but at least temps were way down in the 80s after Monday's and Tuesday's 90s. And they'll likely be the same today with clearer skies, albeit with a small chance of a little more rain. Then temps cool even a bit more on Friday with highs likely 75 to 80 or right around that range with more rain showers likely, followed by an unsettled weekend on the whole with even more rain expected and temps back into the 80s. So enjoy today and get ready for another few wet weekend days ahead and hope for the best. Okay, that's it for us today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there, and be sure to follow us anywhere, anytime, either on our website at dmvweather.com or on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on our app, which you can download for free by searching for DC MDVA Weather in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. But always remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Tis the season, prom season, school dances, after parties, barbecues, and weekends down the ocean. An exciting time for teens. The most recent Maryland Safe and Supportive School Survey shows that three-quarters of Annapolis high school students said it was fairly or very easy for students in their grade to get alcohol. Underage drinking and binge drinking is very real Annapolis. If you give them access to alcohol, you're not cool, but you are liable for the outcome. Create a safe environment for your teens and their friends this prom season. If they need to talk, listen. If you need to talk, we'll listen. We're here for you and your children. We're ASAP, Annapolis Substance Abuse Prevention. ASAP facilitates healthy community change, prevents and reduces binge drinking, underage drinking, and alcohol-related auto crashes among youth and young adults through locally-led collaborations and evidence-based prevention strategies. Visit us at PreventSubstanceAbuse.org. This message is supported by SAMHSA and the Maryland Behavioral Health Administration. This is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. This Saturday, the town of Berlin and Believe in Tomorrow are hosting the 29th annual bathtub races. This is a land race where one person pushes one or more people inside a bathtub with wheels. Multiple heats lead up to the 2018 championship bathtub racer. Also Saturday in Baltimore is the 10th annual Baltimore Dragon Boat Challenge. The Baltimore Dragon Boat Club will host a mix of corporate city, breast cancer survivor, and club dragon boat teams in a series of 500 meter and 2K races. Saturday is also the first of five Kids in Gardens workshops at the Benjamin Banneker Park in Ellicott City. Kids learn about nature while digging in the garden. Pre-registration is required, and it's $15 for all five classes. This weekend in Ocean City is the Art League and Clay Guild of Eastern Shore hosting Clayapalooza. Events include throwing and hand-building demos, a throwdown competition, and bowl-making sessions. Also this weekend in Bel Air is the inaugural East Coast RepRap 3D Printing Festival. We have the RepRap project started in 2005 to thank for all the hobby-level 3D printers we have today. Their goal was to develop a low-cost 3D printer that can print many of its own parts. RepRap is short for Replicating Rapid Prototyper. All next week at Clay Bakers in downtown Annapolis is their Shark Week Summer Camp. Campers create projects from painting pottery, glass fusing, sculpting, tie-dye, and mosaics. Camps encourage children to try new art media and promote creativity and design. And did you know that you can create a piano out of bananas? With Makey Makey You Can, Monday at the Edgewater Library, they'll be having a Makey Makey workshop. It's a fun electronics kit that lets you use random everyday objects as controllers for a digital piano, games, and more. And Wednesday morning at the Broadneck Library is Challenge Island. Children will work in teams, combining critical thinking and creativity to design musical instruments, and then put on a performance. The first session is for preschoolers, and a later one is for elementary-age children. 
And if you miss it at Broadneck on Wednesday, on Thursday are the same two sessions at the Maryland City at Russet Library near Laurel. Tuesday at the South Bowie Branch Library, the Peachy County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta is having their monthly STEM for Families session. At Greenbelt Makerspace this week, tomorrow night, they have their fermentation fan club for fans of any kind of fermentation, including homebrew beer, kombucha, yogurt, and pickling. You name it, virtually a potions class for adults. Saturday is Greenbelt Makerspace's Repair Cafe. Bring in your broken items and work with them on possibly fixing them, from sewing a ripped shirt to gluing a loose chair leg or silver soldering damaged jewelry. For items that can't be repaired, they take donations for a week of Take It Apart activities where kids and curious people are invited to take things apart to see how they work. Also at Greenbelt Makerspace, all next week is their robotics summer camp using Lego Mindstorm robotics kits, performing challenging tasks and competing for special rewards. Tuesday at Annapolis Makerspace is our monthly open house and general meeting. Come by and take a look at the new shop. As always, you can catch me tonight and every Thursday night at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court for Electronics Night. I'll be posting links to these events on the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org sometime today. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.